police structure of the Erzainza, in addition to the units whose functions are focused on crime prevention, there is also a forensic science unit. Created in 1990, it is responsible for matters related to criminal investigation. Once a crime has been committed, they will be there to decipher the information hidden in the evidence, establish the identity of the perpetrator and the circumstances of the incident. Criminals always leave some trace. A fingerprint, a footprint, blood, fibers, gunshot residue, each one of which can speak to us. The Forensic Science Unit searches for, gathers, analyzes, and keeps each piece of evidence from the crime scene in order to answer one question. What happened? Behind the media headlines and the many different processes undertaken anonymously, lies the work of the 10 sections and the 100 or so specialists who make up this Forensic Science Unit of the Erzanza. They all follow meticulous but different procedures depending on the type of crime. Visual inspection of the crime scene is the first step. It is on the ground that the first hypotheses are formed and an agent from the crime scene and visualization of fingerprint section goes there to gather all the evidence. None must be left behind. If there were shots, they will also seek to reconstruct the possible trajectories. Once the evidence has been gathered by the scientific coordination section, it is sent to the different specialist laboratories for testing. From then on, the other sections of the Forensic Science Unit are responsible for processing them correctly. In order to understand the crime, and draw conclusions which can be used in a trial. Depending on the type of evidence, different sections will be involved. The identification of person section swings into action if there are fingerprints which have to be processed and identified, or if there is a possibility of creating profiles based on witness testimonies. All that information is compared not only with the Earth Sciences databases and those of other national and international police forces, but also with the accredited laboratories in order to identify the person or people who committed the crime. Together with fingerprint analysis and visual inspection, another technique traditionally used in criminal investigation is ballistics. Just as no two fingerprints are exactly the same, all bullets are different to some degree. The ballistics and physical traces section is responsible for establishing the relation between the weapons and ammunition involved in a crime. Thanks to their analysis and the use of imaging techniques which make it possible to compare them with existing records. And any weapon is a critical piece of evidence if it can be linked to a person. But this section's sphere of action is much wider, identifying footprints and tire tracks, retrieving numbers erased from metal parts of weapons or vehicles, checking whether a registration number is authentic, or reconstructing lights and covers on cars involved, without forgetting to examine any object which could have been implicated and whose study could help identify the perpetrator. The digital age has been decisive in the fight against crime. The latest scientific and technological advances are invaluable tools in forensic science laboratories. Thanks to that greater efficiency, it has been possible to successfully resolve cases which had remained unsolved. The forensic genetics section experiences those advances firsthand, where in the past you needed a substantial amount of blood or 50 hairs in order to obtain the DNA now, with the tiniest trace of blood, semen, saliva or organic remains, a genetic profile can be constructed. And if the DNA coincides with someone who has previously been arrested, the suspect can be identified. It is now possible to examine anything which is of organic origin. The Forensic Anthropology section swings into action whenever it is necessary to determine the identity and the causes of death through human remains. They know how to read all the information contained in bones, 
they are able to regenerate the fingerprints of a body in an advanced stage of decomposition, and through the forensic examination of a single hair, they can help to identify a body. That is why their presence is required in major catastrophes or disappearances. They also intervene when there are cameras at the scene of the incident, which may have recorded suspects, and it is necessary to compare images in physiognomy reports. Just as the new technologies are used in solving crimes, they are also used to commit them. So, within the Forensic Science Unit, the New Technologies section was created to respond to the demands related to evidence within the technological sphere of images, electronics, audio and computing. Any electronic device can be a veritable treasure for investigators, even if it's in extremely poor condition. Accessing the internal memory of a telephone, even if it's encrypted and irreparably damaged, or retrieving files deleted from a computer are tasks which this section undertakes every day, a thanks to which they solve crimes such as, for example, child pornography. If it is necessary to verify whether credit cards, identity documents or currency have been forged, or to identify the author of a text by comparing the writing of the person being investigated with the document which is the object of an investigation, the intervention of the Document and Graphic Analysis section is required. In addition to carrying out that work, it also advises the police forces and judicial bodies. The Forensic Chemistry section is responsible for determining the chemical composition of substances present at the scene, such as explosives in terrorist attacks, flammable liquids in fires, or traces of varnishes, glass, fibers or paint in collisions. Their technique for the chemical analysis of paint has made them a reference for other police forces. In the case of a collision, friction can leave behind traces of paint on the skin or the clothes of the victim. By examining those particles and comparing them with the databases of registered vehicles, the model of the car can be ascertained, which considerably speeds up the investigation. The analysis of drugs related to illegal consumption in the framework of citizen safety and road safety law is another common task of the professionals in this section. But criminals also investigate, advance and develop new techniques. Therefore, the Forensic Science Unit of the Erzainza is constantly evolving, which has enabled it to play a leading role within the European network of Forensic Science Institutes, the ENFSI, a body which includes only those police forces which fulfill the most stringent requirements in terms of quality. In this regard, the work of the two non-operational departments of this division has been decisive. The Scientific Coordination Section, in charge of all the logistics related to the resources necessary, the receipt of evidence, the updating of databases, administration and forensic intelligence, and the Continuous Improvement Section, which, with its system of external relations and quality management, ensures the competency and reliability of laboratories at national and international level. The human factor is fundamental within the police force of the Basque Country, and it is these specialists in those ten sections who, with their knowledge and striving for constant improvement, ensure that one objective continues to be achieved day after day, to avoid the perfect crime. And they have done precisely that in over 96,000 criminal and social impact cases for which the unit has been responsible since its creation in 1990. And that is undoubtedly one of the keys enabling the Erzainza and its Forensic Science Unit to continue to guarantee security, harmony and well-being in the Basque Country.